We're going to set up Nginx to support multi-tenancy. And what this means is we are going to support wildcard subdomains. Now, I have a setup for Nginx that I like to use. It might not be exactly what you find if you're Googling about wildcard subdomains in Nginx, so stay tuned. We're going to do two things in this video. We're going to use CertBot or Let's Encrypt to create a free uh, auto-renewed wildcard subdomain for our Nginx configuration. And then we're going to put that in our Nginx configuration and also support wildcard subdomains for our applications. We're going to generate that certificate in just a second, but first let's see what it looks like to install CertBot if you don't have it yourself. What you can do is head on over to the CertBot website, select your web server, it's Nginx for me, SnapD for me, or Ubuntu 20. I'm using Ubuntu 22, but SnapD is the same instructions. And we can head down to the installation instructions and just see that we have to run snap install. Uh, this command creates a symlink, so the CertBot command is found. And then we do this to trust plugins because we're going to use a plugin. And the plugin we are going to use is the Cloudflare plugin because my domain, uh, some app.xyz, is using Cloudflare for its DNS. And what it looks like in DNS configuration is this. Notice the wildcard here. This means that any domain or some app to XYZ, any subdomain, is going to go to the server at this IP address, which is the server that's running this app. And that means any wildcard subdomain is going to work for uh, this some app to XYZ domain already. So that's already set up. I actually already have CertBot installed as well. Okay, so we're going to run the command to get CertBot creating a certificate for us in just a sec. I first want to just show you the configuration for Cloudflare. If I make myself user root, we're going to head to the root directory. We're going to look for a file or a directory rather called secrets. Inside of that is a file called cloudflare.ini. Inside of Cloudflare.ini are my credentials, DNS Cloudflare API token with an API key. The API keys inside of Cloudflare are in your My Profile area. You can create an API key for yourself there, just like I did. Okay, we are going to generate our certificate, and here's the command to do so. But we need to know something about how Cloudflare generate certificates for wildcard subdomains. And that is that we need to use DNS authentication instead of the regular HTTP-based authentication that CertBot or Let's Encrypt would normally use for generating a certificate. Wildcard subdomains have to use DNS-based authentication, which means we need to have a way to add DNS entries for our domain, some app to XYZ. Since ours is using Cloudflare, we are going to have the Cloudflare plugin that we installed, which generates or adds the DNS entries as needed to the domain and then removes them when it's done, when CertBot is done authenticating that I actually own this domain. Okay, we're going to use the CertBot command. We're going to do cert only. This generates the certificate for us without creating a web server, without doing anything else. And then we're going to do DNS Cloudflare, the DNS Cloudflare plugin. And then we tell it to reload Nginx after it creates the certificate or auto-renews the certificate later. Uh, I don't want it to be interactive. I agree to the terms of service. Here's my email address, and here's the domains we're going to use, some app to XYZ with the wildcard subdomain, and also the root domain as well, because we can do that here. I'm doing forced renewal here because um, I need to force the renewal because I've done testing with this before, and I actually already have this certificate set up on the server from testing off video. Okay, so that is going to be it. We are going to generate the certificate right now and just see what happens. Okay, so that certificate was created for us. It's at this location with the 001 private, private key and the uh, full chain and all that good stuff. So let's see how to integrate that into our Nginx configuration and support wildcards for our application using a bit of tricky configuration that I like to use for this setup. So let's actually edit our configuration. I'm going to do sudo vim at the nginx conf.d some app.conf where my configuration is. And it's already all set for a old certificate that is specifically for the some app and www some app subdomains. But we want to do is uh, change out the certificates that are already here and use the ones we just generated. So for the www version, uh, I'm going to keep this configuration so it redirects the www subdomain back to the root domain. And we're going to do, let's see, SSL certificate. It's the different certificate here. So if I paste that in, that is uh, still the full chain PEM file, but this is the directory and it has this 001 uh, appended to the directory because I already had this directory here. This already existed from a previous video. So we are going to do the same thing for the private key, which means I think I just need to append 001. And I think that is just about it. And I'll do the same down here. Okay, so that's done. Let's save and quit that. Do sudo nginx t. That's good. So sudo service nginx reload. Also good. Let's test this out. Okay, so some app to xyz still works. The www version should get redirected to the root, and it does. 
Now, if I do just some any random old subdomain, that also gets redirected to the root domain, which is not where we want. We want any subdomain to work. It should remain in our browser bar here, and it should go to our same application, which it actually is doing, but it's just getting redirected. That's not what we want. So let's configure Nginx with my setup that I like to use so this works. So if we check out our Nginx configuration one more time, we might be tempted to do something like this, star.sumapp.xyz, and that um, should actually work. And in fact, I'm going to do two things here. This is going to work for the root domain.xyz, and also star.sumapp.xyz. Let's do sudo nginx-t to test this. It likes it, so we're going to reload it, and let's see what happens here. All right, so sumapp.xyz still works. www gets redirected. ASDF dot sum after XYZ works. Now I get logged out because it's a different domain. So my cookies are no longer valid, which is what you want. And um, it still works, right? So we have wildcard subdomains working, but there's a little bit better configuration that we could use. Okay, and let's see how to do this configuration. What we can do is look at one of my tweets. So what we see this tweet says is Nginx can respond to wildcard subdomains with a star. That's great, but we can capture the subdomain value and do stuff with it. Now, there's a lot of examples of this. I've actually used this to great effect for local development. And one of the useful things that I like to do is to capture the value of the subdomain and pass that into our PHP application. So let's see how that looks. We're going to copy this uh, gnarly looking regular expression and use that. So back over here on our server, we can go ahead and edit the configuration. And I'm going to keep the www redirect. And down here, we're going to replace this uh, star.sumapp.xyz with our regular expression. OK, and here we go. What we did is create a variable that's called tenant. And we can use this variable later. And uh, this is just regular expression stuff to capture any subdomain of some app.xyz. OK, so what's a fun thing we can do with that tenant variable? Well, one thing I like to do is to pass it as a parameter to FastCGI so that I can use the um, server block, so I can use the server super global to get that value so I don't have to parse the subdomain myself. That looks like this. We're going to do FastCGI param. We're going to make a param called tenant. And we're just going to pass it the value of tenant. And what this does is we can then use the server super global for a tenant inside of our code to get the value of that tenant. Let me just do my comment syntax correctly, and we're off to the races there. OK, let's save and quit this. We'll do sudo service nginx reload and sudo nginx-t. I forgot to test the configuration. It doesn't hate it, so let's go ahead and see if this works. OK, so still works, but we don't actually know if that server super global um, has been populated or not. So we can edit that real quick. Let's go ahead and edit our application routes file at our uh, base route. I'm just going to dd server, and we'll see if our wanted information is there. So let's back out. This is still going to work. We're going to go to our root directory here. We get our dump, and I'm going to try to find the word tenant. And tenant is set to ASDF. That's perfect. Now if we do www, which gets redirected to our root, all of a sudden tenant is there, but it's empty, right? So the root's uh, domain has no subdomain. Therefore, our tenant's value is empty. The main trick here, the best thing that I like, is grabbing the value of our subdomain so that we can pass it off to PHP. Uh, for local development, I like to add it in as the root directory so that we can have a uh, different directory, a different code application on our local computer for any subdomain we use. I have a video on that if you want to check out how to set that up for local development for yourself. And that's it. You can now go forth and make money on your SaaS app.